Hi everybody, Audra here, also known as Twisted Chalker, and I am your independent creator with Magnolia Design Company. And tonight I am doing the wood cutting board. I had posted a couple posts in a couple different places asking people to help me pick a stencil to put on the wood cutting board, and I have a winning stencil. So, um, I thought I'd come on and show everybody how the stencil would be, the design would be stenciled onto this wooden, this wooden cutting board. This cutting board I found at an antique mall, and um, the minute I saw it, I knew I had to have it. If you can see the whole thing, there we go. It's a beautiful board on both sides. I don't think it was ever used. It doesn't look like it was ever used. One of my favorite things about it is that right there on the side. It looks like the tree bark. Same on that side as well. Beautiful board. So, as soon as I saw it, I, I just knew I had to put something on there. And so I asked for everybody's opinion because I had narrowed down. I have a lot of stencils. <laughs> and I had narrowed it down to four. And so... Um, I do remember being very tired. I did a live of this and I remember being very tired and I just couldn't think well enough to decide uh, what I was going to do. And so um, I narrowed it down to four and asked for help. And the first one we had was the rooster. And I had, the, I had a few votes for this one. And this one, it says, Act justly, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. And I had a few votes for that one as well. And the third one I had is, I still remember the days I prayed for things I have now. And I had fewer votes, but I did get some votes for this one, but not very many. But most of my votes came for this one. Give us as they are daily bread. So this is the winning stencil. This is what I'm going to put on this beautiful cutting board. I had originally posted it this way, but... Several, several people said I should turn it. And so I'm thinking I really like that idea even better. I know the wording's backward when I do live. I don't know how to adjust it so my words are not backwards when I'm doing a live. If you know, let me know. Please put it in the comments. That way I can get that straightened out. But this is what we're going to put on here tonight. So it's going to be a pretty easy process because there's really nothing to do to the board. I probably don't even need to wax it, but I'm going to go ahead and wax it a little bit first, and then I'll stencil it. So what I'm going to do at this point is lower you down to the table so you can see what I've got going on down here. Okay, here we go. Close your eyes if you tend to get dizzy. There we go. All right. So this is my surface. The um, back side has a watermark right here. Well, it's not even a watermark. It's kind of engraved. Oh, you know what it says? I never even read it. It says, oh, it looks like Cher it says Cherokee Casino, and then it's got a little, it's got a little um, logo. I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, that's neither here nor there, because it's the back side. I could stencil on that side, but I don't think I will because of that. That will kind of, I don't know if that'll work for the design. So I'm just going to do it this way, just on this side. So this is a brand new stencil. And the reason I know this is number one, there's no staining on it. And number two, or number three, two, it's perfectly in line with the backing. I never get these lined back up perfectly. I do well enough so that I can store them and keep them in good condition, but I never get them back on perfectly. And, and the third reason I know is because there's nothing written on the back. And you always want to write something on the back. And the reason being is because you don't want to accidentally put the stencil back on your backing on the wrong side. I've done that. I accidentally did that. And um, I stretched out my stencil trying to get it off of this. It was, it was crazy, crazy stuck to it. And so my stencil got stretched out and it rolls. And I, I have a hard time keeping it straight now. And I think I ended up having to order a new one. So... It's very important. So I just take a permanent marker and on the back I just write something. 
give us this day. That's enough. Okay, so now, after the stencil is dry, I'll be able to place it on here and make sure I don't get it on the wrong side. Now, don't fret if you forget, because another way you can tell, and I had, well, I'm not going to remove it yet. I'll tell you when I'm done. There's a way to tell. Um, but first, I'm going to wax this a little bit, just to make sure the surface is um, prepared for use. So, uh, this is just mid wax, and I accidentally bought special dark when I first went out looking for wax. I didn't realize there were different colors, and I just grabbed the can off the shelf and bought special dark, and that won't work for light colored wood when you're waxing anything that's light colored. And by the time I tried to use it, it was too late to return it. Lowe's is very, very strict about their dates and their timelines. Excuse me, I need some water. Okay, so I just use it whenever I have dark projects. And you just need a little bit, and you just want to rub it on the surface. I'm using um, their lint free. These right here. These lint free rags. You can get them in the auto department in Walmart. That's what I use to rub the, the wax on. And I just put a little bit. The wax kind of helps protect the um, the stencil because it is an adhesive stencil, and so when you adhese it, when you when you adhese it, <laughs> when you stick it to wood, you know it might pull up some pieces of wood pulp, you know, or um, it also helps with keeping the chalk from bleeding. There we go. All right, so now I am going to just run the blow dryer over it just a little bit just to dry it. It's not really drying it, drying it, because um, I didn't put a thick layer. You don't need a thick layer, just a thin one. It's going to get loud here, so you may want to turn down your volume. Feels good. Feels nice and smooth. So now I'm just I'm done with the wax. So over here, I don't need the rag anymore. All right. So now back to the stencil. So I wrote on the back what this what this backing belongs to. And now I'm going to peel the stencil off the backing. I'm going to show you the difference between the front and the back of the backing. All right. So, I don't know if you can see. See how shiny that is? It really, really reflects the lights in my chandelier. And in the back, it's not so shiny. So if you forget to write something on this side, just look for the really, really shiny side rather than the, um, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. <laughs> the shiny, the, you know, anyway, the side that's not so shiny. <laughs> this is brand new. It's going to be crazy, crazy sticky. So I am going to use my tacky towel. We use this side for drying the stencil. And we use this side for what we call fuzzing the stencil. And I'm going to place the stencil on here and just put it on and peel it off. And just keep doing that until I feel like it's not too sticky. If it's really, uh oh, if it's really sticky and gets stuck to your surface, it can stretch it out and damage it while you're pulling it off. There we go. If they get stuck together like that, just carefully peel it apart. Normally, when mine gets stuck like that, when they fold over on themselves, it happens when I'm washing them. And it's really easy to remove them if you just let the water run over it while you're peeling it apart so carefully. But when you're about to use it, you don't want to get it too wet. Or you don't want to wet it at all, if possible. 
so because you want to use your stencil completely dry which is how one reason why I would use the green side of this tacky towel now if you don't have a tacky towel you can just put it on your shirt or on your pants leg or on your skirt or whatever you don't have to have one they're just nice they're nice to have they make it a lot easier to do the job it's still very sticky I'm gonna keep doing it for a minute I think that's a good one all right so instead of doing it this way I'm gonna do it this way so I'm just going to center it on the board as best as I can Since this is an item I want to put in my booth, I want to make sure I get it as exact as I can. So it's two inches from the top and one and a half inches from the bottom. So I'm going to move it up a little bit, see if that works. So about one and three quarter inches and one and three quarter inches. I love it when it's that easy. All right, so now that it's there, it's where I want it to be. I'm going to start from the center and work my way out. And the goal here is to make sure I get all of the air bubbles out. No air bubbles. If you have air bubbles in the screen area, I don't know if you can see. See, with all the green part, is our actual stencil and then you can see the wood through the screening where the design is going to come out this is screening it's um kind of like silk screen basically the paste will go through that area and the design will be left on the board i feel a little lump right here so i'm going to move that out of there All right, no air bubbles. If you have air bubbles, you can kind of hear like a, I like to refer to snap, crackle, and pop, you know, <laughs> like Rice crispy. So if you hear a snap, crackle, and pop, you just want to keep smoothing it out until you don't hear it anymore. The color I chose to use tonight is almond latte. This is our chalk paste. And I opened it and stirred it before I came on because it was brand new and I wanted to make sure well, I didn't want to make sure. It's hard for me to get the foil off. <laughs> so I wanted to take a minute to get it ready. And so this is a great consistency. It's absolutely perfect. Kind of like cake batter. Kind of like yogurt. Perfect and ready for use. So, since I have my bigger squeegee, I'm using my bigger squeegee tonight because it's a big area to cover. Since I'm using this, and it won't really fit in the jar i'm going to take my stir stick and use it as a little scooper and just scoop some out and place it in various places don't worry if you accidentally scoop out too much because you're going to be putting it back in anyway what you don't use will go back in the jar one of the um, great things that i love about this paste is oops oh yeah that's right so bet all i'm doing is smearing it across the screening holding the squeegee at a bit of an angle not straight up and down at an angle being careful not to go off the edge of the stencil and i probably could have put more out i'm putting globs of it <laughs> One of the reasons is it just makes it easier to work with, and another is so that it doesn't dry out on the design while I'm still stenciling. I think just one solid color will be perfect for this board. I think um, 
the board itself is beautiful enough and has enough detail on it that I don't need to make the design very fancy at all. Just a plain light colored picture. So now I've covered up all of the um, got a little dried up piece. That's okay. Covered up all the screen area. I can see no brown whatsoever. And it's on there pretty thick. So I'm just going to scrape it off and place it back in the jar. So this is when I hold it upright. Hold it upright and just squeegee it off and put it back in here. When you're doing this, you can really see whether or not you got all of the screened areas covered. Sometimes I miss, and it's at this point when I'm able to see, you know, if I've missed an edge or a corner or a tiny little piece that's sticking out that I didn't see. All right. Now we're going to peel to reveal. Now, when you peel this off, you don't want to just grab the corner and rip it across. You want to grab the corner and lift it up and then work your way to the center. And then just work it off this way. And carefully. It's still a little stuck to the board. That's why the board's sliding. <laughs> I'm loving what I see so far. I have absolutely no complaints. And there it is. Let me put this in water. Normally I would wash this right away, but I, I don't want to leave you sitting there watching nothing while I'm washing my stencil. So I'm tucking it into a container of water right now. This is just gorgeous. It made a beautiful board even more gorgeous, I think. Okay, I'm going to dry it, so you might want to turn your volume down. spot. See there is the finished result and I see a spot right here that I don't like. Some For some reason the screening pulled the paste up and didn't leave it down in the design. So I'm going to take my little fine tip squeegee and I'm going to dip it in the chalk paste and dab it in the areas that I want to fill in. And then dry it. And I see one more spot that I want to fill in. Right there. Oops. A little too much. Wipe it off. There we go. And that's it. We have a beautifully decorated, gorgeous cutting board that can be used to decorate a kitchen. Now at this point, I will take it outside. Well, 
I will stick it outside the back door. <laughs> and I'm going to uh, spray it with my Krylon Matte Finisher. I can't stop looking at it. It's so pretty. <laughs> so, um, that's it. If you... Um, if you have any questions, any questions about the stencils, any questions about the tools used, uh, just leave a comment in the comments, and I will get back with you as soon as possible. All right. Thanks, everybody. And also, thank you, everyone, for your help with deciding which one to use on here. It was an excellent, excellent choice, and I am so very happy with it. All right. Good night, everybody.